Luca Universe. Mamma, mamma, mamma mia. Yes, I'm wearing a blue shirt and it's not the blue shirt that I would have uh, liked to wear. Probably I would not have worn it either way because um, if Italy would have beaten North Macedonia, I would have said this is actually business as usual. But yeah, boom. Yesterday evening, uh, I mean, the entire day I've been following World Cup qualifying results, like uh, literally all, ev everything happening in Asia, Oceania. Um, and then, of course, Europe, I, you know, I was sleeping while everything was happening in the Americas, but I saw the results. So I uh, will touch on those uh, a little bit. You see, we have uh, four more nations qualified, three of which I own jerseys. We have Japan and we have uh, Ecuador and Uruguay having also qualified for next year's World Cup. So a uh, pretty big things there. Uh, it means I need to get definitely now a Saudi Arabia jersey, but that was any way uh, where I saw things were going. So uh, nothing new there. And yeah, we have no further team qualified from Europe, but we have a few nations. And I, I, I was thinking yesterday, yeah, um, if you would have for four uh, games had, had me pick which team I would like to move on, I'm two for four, so it's a 50%. But of course, the two teams that were nearest and dearest to me, both are out. So, <laughs> one has to take a deep breath. Um, and uh, honestly, I am disappointed that Austria didn't qualify. Uh, but I, I saw it coming all the way. Italy is a completely diff different story, but I will come back back because I think that there's a little bit of poetic, poetic justice. And I honestly, I feel uh, when the goal yesterday got in, I was actually, uh, actually laughing because I saw exactly how this game is going to go. And it was kind of, yeah, it, it was, uh, I don't know if you want to call it manic laughter or what, whatever, but the way the game was going, this was exactly how it's going to end. And I actually am, in a way, more okay with them now l losing now, because you know, uh, going to Portugal, yeah, I guess. whatever. Uh, let's first start in Asia, where I think the first big result was that Australia tried to get the win over Japan, and Japan strikes twice very, very late. Uh, I think it was in the 89th and in stoppage time uh, that uh, Mitoma and uh, scored. Two, so 89th and 94th um, with Japan thus qualifying for the World Cup and also qualifying Saudi Arabia at this point and also meant that Australia is dead set on this third spot and now going into the playoff. Um, of course, for Australia, this is a super disappointing result, but they had it coming because uh, you already uh, messed up uh, earlier when, uh, especially in uh, a game when you only be, uh, went 2 2 against Oman and so on. Uh, there's a really good chance that Australia will not be at next year's World Cup. Uh, this year's World Cup. It's next season's World Cup, I want to say. Um, other interesting re re results uh, were, of course, that the UAE uh, did not win. In fact, they lost 1-0 to Iraq. And now Iraq is in the hunting for this playoff spot to play against um, um, Australia. The Emirates have to play at home against Korea and Iraq have to go to Syria, which means they play on a neutral venue. So actually, I think Iraq can do that. Uh, it's still at the moment that 69% are for the Emirates uh, to make it into, into the playoff. But it is not impossible. All the other teams are disqualified. <laughs> or are not, not, not disqualified, but cannot make it anymore. Uh, also, South Korea beat... Uh, Iran to nil, so it's another. Uh, that was a big uh, boy meeting, uh, which kind of, kind of shows that South Korea is the class of this group. And um, yeah, let's see what they will do with the next World, World Cup. We know that Asian, um, you know, that Asian track record is not all that great. So yeah. Uh, but those two teams were very, very qualified. We're going to Oceania, um, New Zealand 7 1 over uh, New Caledonia. It was 1-1 at a point, and you know, I have no idea how those teams are strength-wise, but I was really, yeah, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. 
Uh, is this a tough match for New Zealand? They only need a new point and then it really goes seven one over over them. In the other game, uh, the Solomon Islands beat Tahiti three one. So it will be Tahiti playing now New Zealand and the uh, Solomon Islands play against Papua New Guinea. So uh, for the Oceania spot, who then will play Conway Ball? Uh, so it seems to be all set up for New Zealand, but they have a whole lot of um, games to play. Let's go to Europe. <laughs> oh no, let's do first the Americas before we go all to Europe and I lose myself and also we also need to preview, preview a little bit Africa as well, but that is uh, I leave for less. Um, in the Americas, the big match between uh, Uruguay and um, Peru ended, you know, I love Peru, so uh, I, I was a little bit sad, ended with a 1-0 win for U U Uruguay, the goal coming for a second min uh, minute through the Aracante. Um, I have not seen anything, so I cannot tell you how deserved or undeserved this win was. I just state the obvious that this result sent Uruguay and Ecuador through. Ecuador actually losing uh, away to Paraguay, which gives Paraguay a little bit in the... Uh, no, it does not keep them in the running. Uh, didn't mean anything for Paraguay. I'm sorry for that. Uh, Chile losing 4-0 to Brazil. I don't know what happened with Argentina and Venezuela's uh, matchup. Uh, I... We gotta see. Colombia can score goals. 3-0 over Bolivia. So uh, with that, we have now for four teams qualified from South America. And we have um, kind of three teams still in the running for this playoff spot to play against the Asian uh, a playoff winner. We have Peru at 21. We have Colombia at 20. We have Chile at 19. Um, with Peru having the 68% chance of making it in, 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 into the playoff. Um, however, when I look at the matches, I mean, Peru have to play Paraguay at home. If you win, you're in. However, if I look at the other matches, uh, Colombia, as far as I know, have to go away to Venezuela, which potentially is a win, but I don't know, you know, I don't know what was happening with Argentina. Maybe there's some COVID thing that they can't, they can't play. So, um, I... I should have researched that before for, for that one, but more important, uh, so, the, so, so this is Colombia, uh, and uh, Chile have to play at home against the Uruguay team that probably is already qualified, so don't have much play for, so it's all hinges on Peru beating Paraguay. It's that simple. Uh, in CONCACAF, the big one between the Mexico and the United States ended in a nil-nil at a half-empty Azteca, which is always a weird sight to see. And yeah, uh, it definitely improved the chances of the U.S. qualifying, but it, you still have to be uh, beat Panama. Canada, just not quite yet. I mean, they're more or less there. At the way it stands, I have 100% for Canada. Uh, it's just below 100%. Let me actually check uh, this because I want to see now the, uh, exact numbers, the exact numbers, because that is... Definitely interesting. Where is it? Just a sec. Well, I can't, I can't, I, I can't find, but, but you know, it's close to 100%. Um, the United States 998 and Mexico 99 with Costa Rica now are in being in, in, in this fourth spot. Costa Rica beating Canada. So uh, that, that was a big win for them. And then uh, we have Panama only 1-1 one, one against Honduras. Jamaica, El Salvador also in a 1-1, one, one, that doesn't really matter. So uh, it will now come down uh, to those final games, but I think that the top three are looking rather good and uh, probably Costa Rica also not too bad, especially should Panama lose to the United States, then uh, it is looks pretty safe there. From what I hear is that the United States were largely the better team in Mexico, probably um, would have deserved the win. Okay, let's go to uh, the playoffs. Uh, I actually, I want to keep the Italy result for last. <laughs> um, Sweden against the Czech Republic. That, that was a game that was always going to go to overtime. Uh, yes, Sweden had more of the game. Um, I was semi-neutral. Yes, I do like Sweden more than the Czechs, but I think I wouldn't have minded if the Czechs would, would make it as, as well. Um, but yeah, it went to overtime and uh, Sweden then scored a wonderful goal through Kweiss and Isa co-combining co co just uh, early on the second half of overtime. Uh, the Czechs just had too many injuries. Uh, injuries had a major part in these European playoffs, I gotta say. With Patrick Schick out, 
there wasn't ever much gonna happen for the Czechs, I'm afraid. Um, we, what else do we have? Um, let's do Portugal, Turkey first, because poor Portugal, egg, 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 first half looked really, really good. Uh, came out storming. Um, had a 2 0 lead at halftime that, uh, you know, maybe Turkey could go, but they had two or three really good chances once in he, he, he hitting the woodwork. But uh, Otavio and Diogo Jota already had a 2 0 and Diogo Jota missed early on a really, really good chance already. Um, Turkey then, though, came, 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 came back, and there's a never they say die attitude to Turkey. Burak Yilmaz in 65th pulls one back, and then they get the penalty. Yes. By the rules, it was one, and I think uh, the, uh, there was a lot made falling down. However, Yilmaz puts it on the upper side of the crossbar. And so I think if this goes 2 2, Turkey has a really good chance of winning this one. But then, you know, uh, Leao and so on come, come on, and he assists uh, Nunes to make it 3 1. Um, I will say about uh, my thoughts on Poro, Poro, Poro Portugal a little, a little bit later. Um, Wales, Austria. Uh, Yes, if you uh, make your chances up front, don't make your chances up front, you're never going to win in Wales. That's the first thing. I mean, uh, Baumgartner hitting the crossbar with a golden chance very, very early on. And yeah, it was also down to the brilliance of one Gareth Bale, who is, uh, to me, the biggest enigma in world football, because non-existent for his clubs, not only Real Madrid, he was also a non-entity for Spurs. But for Wales, he shows up. Now... I actually think it is not that hard to show up for Wales, not only because of country pride, because the opposition is not that not that well organized as it is in the club game. And while Austria normally should be a decent side, and I said it yesterday, uh, under if Austria would decide on who how to play uh, and uh, hire uh, coach a core calling, I think Austria would be forced to be reckoned with and would actually not even would probably be in the playoffs, but would have a home game. That's how much I think of the quality that the Austrian squad has at this very moment. However, the coach cannot... It's just... I mean, they did they, they, they did have a decent performance yesterday. They went for it, so uh, you lost it earlier on. The free kick by Gareth Bale, I saw him run up. I told him oh, this is going to be a goal for Wales, and boom, it went in. Um... It looked weird how the way Heinz Lindner went there, but when you see the ball, how it hits exactly up there, it was a brilliant free kick. Uh, There's not much that I can blame the goal goalkeeper for. I can blame the little bit more of, uh, you know, again, the second goal for Wales, uh, he takes the ball nicely and turns around, make, 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 free, and, uh, and, and get it. I have a little bit more problem with that one because you just cannot allow that. Uh, they pull one back. Through a def uh, to a through the flag, Sabre Sabre is the shot, but there were earlier, there were many chances that the Austrians already gave, gave up, and I think Wales totally deserved this. Um, I'm actually, I was actually then hoping when it was 2 0 for Wales, I said, let it be now 5 or 6 0 for Austria that we never even consider Franco Foda anymore. Unfortunately, the president says, we don't know about the future, it can be with Franco Foda, it can be without Franco Foda. I want him gone. Um, I think that this generation of Austrian players does not qualify for a World Cup is a travesty. And it is a squarely down on the shoulders, not only of Franco Foda, but also the leadership at the Austrian Football Federation. And unfortunately, it's not going to change anytime soon. So uh, Austria's wait for a World Cup qualification, first one since 98, continues. However, Wales, and actually I feel good, good, good about it, will have, have, have now a really, really good chance of qualifying for a World Cup First time since 58, Wales made Pelé into a world star because he scored his first uh, goal, World Cup goal against Wales in the quarterfinals in 50. This was the last time that Wales was there. So uh, actually it would be fun to have Wales at the World Cup. Um, at least Austria does not have to face the dilemma, do we want to go to Qatar or not like other nations do. Another big one. Italy, North Macedonia. <laughs> I said it already in my... Uh, the moment Berardi missed the golden chance in the 25th minute. I mean, there were already a few chances before, but I think it, Italy was very trigger-happy, but without much thought. And I saw that the Macedonians were defending valiantly and stoutly. And this is, of course, 
something that will Italy that gives problems to Italy. You just have to break. You have to have a, a way of breaking down defensive. Italy won the Euros largely because the other teams were playing more open, and Italy could uh, play. But if you stand on the back solid defensive line, Italy still has problems. And I saw this uh, from a mile away. This was the tactics, of course. Uh, but then the goalkeeper plays on the ball directly to Berardi, wide open goal, and he passes it back more, more, more or less. I mean. I, at that moment, I knew they're not going to win this game. I had still some hope. He also missed on a second chance later on. But the one, one thing I definitely have to be said, there were not that many big chances for Italy to begin with. They had many shots, but they have hardly any shots on goal. Uh, would Italy have deserved to win this game? Um, just by the stats, probably yes. However, the way North Macedonia was defending, I actually thought, they are really giving it their all. Uh, it would not be undeserved if my North Macedonia win that one. I was ready for overtime, two overtime time to time to time games, and then uh, Drakowski, who played for Palermo, yanks it in. Jorginho, more concerned with, yeah, handball, handball of, 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 of Davis, does not close him down. He takes the shot, uh, it goes past Donnarumma from far out. I mean, it's. I think it's a very savable shot as well. And disaster was up. Then, I think the biggest chance was the lay later on. João Pedro. And now, João Pedro does not have, should not even be near an Italian national team. But that's a whole different story. Uh, deflects a shot from Florenzi. And that was that. Uh, complete disaster. Now, I, I'm of... Whether Mancini, Mancini has a big country until I think 26, so uh, pro, probably you have to keep him there because it's just, um, and he probably can't turn it around. I mean, he turned around, the, it, it, it's good, but now he has to live with that shame. Uh, I think the only way Mancini goes is that if he steps, steps down. I'm of two minds about this because, you know, yes, he had this huge, humongous triumph at the Euros, but he also has not this disaster. And while I always defended Yogi Löw that he should stay with the national team even after the disaster of Russia, uh, hindsight, of course, is you should have fired him. And I think probably this is what should happen. What, what should happen here? Now, um, let's talk the Italy perspective. You did a deal with the devil. You obviously signed somewhere that you win the Euros, but you twice in a row don't qualify for the World Cup. Now, uh, I don't see it, it is embarrassing, but I don't see it as this huge, huge, huge disaster in some ways. Uh, you know, the last big nation that did not qualify twice in a row was France. Um, they then went on to win the World Cup, albeit on home soil. So, uh, you know, it's not the end of the world per se, especially since we know you have a talented group. The mentality of that group needs to be a little bit questioned, and the 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 the, the, the goal the goal scoring. I think the whole thing. It, I don't think even it's an indictment on the state of Italian soccer in any way, because uh, let's face it, uh, they produce enough talent. The Italians are always there. There are enough good Italian players. I'm a little bit more worried that some Italian players are not playing regularly in the league. Maybe this is something that has to be uh, addressed. And maybe the infrastructure. What I don't want to have any, any, anymore is when Italy plays uh, such decisive games. Like against Sweden, they say we play in Milan because we never had a bad result in Milan. We play now in Palermo because the southern uh, crowd will uh, care, care, care. So don't do that crap. Decide that you play in Rome and play in Rome. Now, uh, as I said, I mean, I was nervously chuckling after the game. Um, Italy have only themselves to blame. Yes, the qualifying procedure is rather tough and rather odd, and maybe uh, UEFA, they, uh, this is a whole different story. UEFA is not doing themselves a favor with uh, such a playoff system that opens up upsets, which in the end uh, might mean that uh, lesser teams can qualify for a World Cup, uh, which then hurts the uh, overall allocation for UEFA, which many probably right, right for the will argue is anyway quite high. So um, give and take on that. However, this is the format. You have to live with that format. Uh, 
and Italy have only themselves to blame because the draw against Bulgaria, you should have dominated and won that one. But I'm looking, especially the two games against Switzerland, you had two penalties that could have won the game and would have sent you to, 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 to the World Cup. And yes, Jan Sommer is famous for saving penalties. That is, you have only yourself to blame. I don't want to blame Jorginho, although he, I have three instances now, because Jorginho, I think, is a really, really good player. Three instances. He had the two penalty misses and, of course, not closing down Trakowski yesterday. But you have only yourself to blame. And you got to live with that now. Uh, as I said, deal with the devil. Would you get a Euro win and not qualify to us for the World Cup? That's the question. Now, the Italian World Cup record since winning it all, that's another deal with the devil in a way. Because the last, <laughs> the last knockout game that Italy played at the World Cup is that very final. That is unworthy of a big nation like Italy. Absolutely unworthy. It's beyond anything. Uh, just by World Cup performances, it's the worst period of Italian soccer ever. However, there were three good Euro performances in between. You reached the, you reached the final in 2012. You, with probably the worst Italian team ever, you made it to the quarterfinal and only lost some penalties to Germany. And then uh, to top, top it off, you win it. So, Quo uh, Vadis Italy. Absolutely. Now, um, as I said, I'm not so unhappy because I think if there's any justice in the world, Portugal qualifies. Portugal have been denied a good goal in Serbia. Portugal should already be qualified. And now, so in that sense, I think, um, I, for me, it's very clear. If there's justice, poor Portugal will qualify. Of course, I would love it if North Macedonia qualifies. But the only, uh, of all the playoff nations, the only one that would deserve to qualify because they were cheated by the system of not having VAR in World Cup qualification earlier is Portugal. And so I, I don't have to have this anxiety now, you know, where uh, if I cheer for Italy, it would not be fair because blah, blah, blah. No. Italy have only themselves to blame, they messed this up, they are a much better team than most of the opponents, or all of the opponents they have faced. It is down to Mancini not finding the right solutions. So there you go. I, one has to accept it. One has to accept it uh, the way it is. Um, and, you know, nose to the grindstone. Get the motivation, go, go, go again, win another Euro Tour to tournament, fail again. Maybe. Let's see. Okay. Rant over. Uh, long video, but we're gonna go now to uh, Africa. We have uh, the playoff there, and I think this, of all the fixtures, the European playoffs are exciting, but of all the fixtures that are coming, I think what's happening in Africa with direct knockout. I mean, this Africa is a, a, a confederation uh, almost as big as UEFA. They have five spots and they leave it with a playoff at the end. And one where one could argue that even the seeding was slightly off. Today we have the DRC against Morocco, where Morocco already complained we have not been treated well. Then we have a pretty big one with Cameroon, Algeria. Cameroon switched their coach for that one to Rigo Song. Will be interesting. Algeria, of course, after the failure at the AFCON, that's a big one, I, I would say. Mali-Tunisia is kind of this overlooked match. Uh, I think it it is rather evenly matched. In fa slightly favor for Tunisia because they have the second leg at home. But that is one, and uh, Mali have been getting results against Tunisia regularly as of late. And then in the evening, of course, the two big ones. Uh, Egypt against Senegal, a replay of the AFCON final. Salah against Mane. Only one of those two will make it. Uh, and then the derby, the Jolof derby between Ghana and Nigeria. Jolof being a local dish and the two nations, which are not neighbors, but those are the two biggest uh, English-speaking African nations. Uh, of course, um, are arguing who makes the better Jolof uh, dish. So uh, it is those two really uh, big brother, little brother, intense rivalry in many ways. Nigeria, though, 
probably heavily favored in that one because I think the Ghana team we saw at the AFCON is not really, really, really good. Let, let, let's look at the chances. For the first one, Egypt against Senegal. I have, my model gives Senegal a 58% chance. I would actually expect this game to end in a draw tonight. Cameron, Algeria, 56% chance for Algeria. Um, Nigeria, 59%. Morocco, 67%. And then, as I said, Mali, Tunisia is a 53% for Tunisia overall. But yeah, quite exciting stuff happening. Uh, I will watch most of these because I absolutely, you know, I love African uh, soccer. I, again, I don't expect great games, but I expect great jersey matchups. In any case, long video, but yeah, I'll give you a, a summary of those tomorrow. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I would really like to know what you think about what was happening yesterday. Um, you know, and also feel, feel, feel me on what was happening in the Americas. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.